Hello everyone, this is part 2 of an interview with PK Fuzzy, one of the most notable players in Splatoon history. You can find part 1 in the description below, and this will talk about a few other concepts such as the mistakes top teams are making. Trap if you enjoy, let's get started. Alright, so let's talk a bit more about some of the experience stuff. Obviously you're one of the most experienced players in the scene at this level. What are some of the main things you think you've learned from being at a top level for so long? Because we have a good bit of top players right now, obviously, but a lot of them are more newer, only have a few years of experience on their belt. You have a lot more. Are there some things that you think less experienced players might not know that are kind of important to get down? Things that I learned, um, you know, from both prior games, Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2, there's always little things that you could pick up. Uh, Splatoon 1, the main thing that I still to this day am able to do, like I feel personally better than anyone else, is read jumps. Like Splatoon 1 was 100% the whole meta surrounded around, uh, I mean revolved around a stealth jump and being able to read jumps and predict when jumps were coming in, where they would be, and uh, killing them on landing in order to reduce their impact is a skill that I still bring to this day, like, uh, still use, still predict, like, I'm always the first one, like, uh, be careful for jumps, like, especially if the opponent is wearing creep respawn and, and you could read them. Yeah, especially in Splatoon 1, that's so hard with, you know, no marker, <laughs> you had to really be exactly aware of where they were. The difficulty in this game is more because there's a lot more weapons that have options on landing, like, especially Splatanas and Duelies, that make it a bit more tricky, even if you can see it, to be able to take them out quickly before they get enough value for their team to help them out. For sure, like, th those, those weapons in particular can be really tricky even ball points right now with drop roller on their jetpack landing it's super annoying sometimes but the awareness of it to not get caught off guard like it's super valuable like i really feel like uh, i change a lot of games just with calling out like hey like they might be jumping to that guy like that you're chasing right now so like as you're chasing him be aware that a stamper might land on your head and then from splatoon 2 the main skill that you really gained as you st as everyone played the game is like comboing specials, timing specials. Um, but I probably most players now are familiar from Splatoon 2. Uh, you know, compared to Splatoon 1, which was so long ago, uh, most people have like that kind of gauge down. The thing for me, after all these years of playing, that you really um, pick up on. Um, doesn't really have to do anything with like the game itself. It has to do with the players that you're fighting within a set, within a tournament set, within a scrim. Like players should be picking up on the opponent's uh, tendencies to the point where, by the end of this scrim or or tournament set that you have, you should be able to have an idea. Um, vaguely of like what this guy is going to do in this particular moment, uh, the special timings that they're using, the openings that they're doing. Um, using that to your advantage um, so a lot of times when i'm practicing when i'm scrimming and practicing i'm just practicing i'm not using that knowledge i'm get i'm watching what my opponents are doing i'm um, watching what the opponent stamper is doing like if i'm playing a back line and he and they zip me um i'm paying attention to what they're doing are they zipping on top of me are they zipping from a safe distance where i have to use the long range mode and stuff like that and then i'm not i'm not trying to counter it then i i'm i'm playing at their game allowing them to do what they want because it, i'm pra i'm just practicing i'm not trying to win every single encounter when i'm just practicing trying to get better at the game um, this advantage, uh, this situation in this, that I'm explaining right now, a stamper zip versus a ball point, is advantage towards a stamper, um, unless they're zipping right on top of you. So, as stampers got better, within a few weeks, and started zipping at a safe distance away to, uh, long range you instead, I just took those fights, and I lost them, and I lost them, and I lost them, and I lost them, until we get to a tournament set, and instead of just fighting it, for example, I would hide, run away, I would be more prepared if I needed to fight it to actually shoot at it and like totally change the direction of a game because you could sense that the player that you're pra you've been practicing against all week was expecting to kill you because they have been during practice all day without really understanding that they just gave you all the practice and experience that you needed to beat them when it mattered. Um, so those type of situations, it happens with all of them. It happens when I'm fighting against players that are renowned for their mechanics. I'm just going to go fight them. I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose. And then when it comes time to a, a set that matters, something that matters, I'll be able to turn the tides, like, because I'll know what they want to do before that. Very last thing with the experience that I've had, um, Brian is super famous. Brian, um, the Dutch player, he's an expo player now, one of the best Samurai players, one of the most accomplished veterans of Splatoon one two and three uh he's famous for being able to hear p 
people hiding in the puddles. Um, I I can never do it like him. I can never hear them until this game. For some reason, in this game, I could finally hear people and listening for people swimming around you is super valuable in this game um which i'm not sure I, i'm not sure if people are doing i, I i've never really heard it in, in a voice chat of my own I, I never heard it on a vod you could hear people near you and and totally use that to your advantage whether there's a guy just hiding in a corner whether he's trying to sneak up on you situations like that not not exactly game mechanic stuff but like meta gaming like player versus player stuff i feel like i really have like a huge advantage over everyone else with like my vision and idea of the game you have to remember also i'm not always i'm not currently i'm not on a team i don't want to be on a team i'm not practicing to win the next major tournament so i'm able to allow myself the freedoms of like taking disadvantage advantageous fights um playing weirdly to try and catch on to players habits stuff like that it's uh it's a freedom that I'm allowed to have that not many players spend their time doing. What do you think is the most common mistake you see a lot of top level players make? Like at the highest level, what is the number one thing you see that's like, I oh, these guys can't keep doing this. Like, how do we keep making this mistake at this point? I was really thinking like hard about this question when I first saw it. Um, and there, there's an obvious answer for me, which I've been trying to preach in Splatoon 3 for a while now the players get locked into their roles too strictly and it hurts their performance. Um, I'm going to use an example. I don't want to single any players or teams out, but I'll just say in a generalization against Japan, like against West and against Japan, like there's three top teams at like the absolute, absolute, absolute peak of Western Splatoon right now, Starburst, Jackpot and Alliance Rogue. When they're playing well and doing what they want to do, their team strategy, they could just totally destroy any group of players that come up against them in the West, like, without issue. Like, I've been destroyed by all three of them. I've played with and against all three of them. Like, they're all great players. All of them are great teams. All of them have different identities, but they could all find extreme success just dominating the, you know, the sets that they're in. However, when, so now we're going to versus Japan, that very specific practice that they have totally does them a disservice when they're playing against players that they're not familiar with and it really shows in the comms that they have in the ability to like do a retake properly or or just you could sense the franticness in their play style like they don't have the control they're used to um so for th for that level of top like this the peak peak level and you could spread that a little bit below because it it's not uncommon for like a the fourth ranked team, fifth ranked team to have a good scrim against one of these teams. I'd love to see like those actual players, if, if they're not going to play with other players just to gain some more experience in like disadvantageous situations because they're just playing and they're just winning so much that they're not experiencing what it's like to lose a game and have to retake without specials or something, you know, as simple as we've all experienced in like solo queue, but in their team environment now they're so dominant they might not see that that much um i'd love to if they're not going to be playing with other players at least maybe just switch your team roles switch your weapons in a scrim like do something to make yourselves uncomfortable and have to play um from a from a different point of view than you're normally used to i would love if players just freely played with everyone uh it's not going to happen. It's been it's been a conversation for eight years now. You know, just I, I understand both sides. I've been I've been there. I've been on the best team, and I've been looking down on other teams. Like, why would I waste my time making you better when all that's going to do is give you a better chance to beat me? I I, I I've been there. I get it. Like look, now in my in my chair that I'm sitting in now, I think that's selfish and short sighted. But I do get it i have been there again it's not really much to do in the game i mean if i had to pick a, a legitimate mistake that top level players make it's kind of in the same vein where they're very used to their pace of their team and when the pace whatever their pace is when that pace gets disrupted it's utter chaos the, the answer is the same the answer is getting more experience uh, a lot of players you know they stop playing solo queue they like I said, they don't play with anyone besides their team, and obviously they're all still great players. Like, all the players on these three top teams I'm talking about, all the players, you know, 
two, three, four, five teams right behind them. They're all great players, but I, when when we're fighting the final boss, when we're fighting Japan, every single time it seems like we're just just right there and not quite. Just, we're so close. And I think like that world, that experience of being able to take over a game, we've all done it in solo queue before we were comp players. We played solo queue, we're going 25 and three and we're just totally taking over. Like those instincts need to come up in, in, a, in a big moment in, in an important set. Like uh, I feel like we lose that a lot because we're playing support only and my team just destroys you every time. So all I have to do is look backward and get my jet pad. And by the time I look forward, you guys are two down. I can jet pack no problem. We win the game over and over again. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm, I know I'm ranting now, but uh, that's like one thing I, I'm so I always harp on. I just really want to see players play with different different players and and just learn how to be a great player in every single aspect, not just the one team uh, environment that you have. Well, to kind of wrap up, we've had quite a long discussion here. So, do you have any advice to people who are watching who might be striving to reach top level to be able to get to the point we've been talking about for this whole time? What's some of the main advice you'd like to give anyone watching? The first piece of advice I'd like to give any player um, that's trying to break into competitive scene, uh, if they're not already on a, a team or don't already have a name for themselves, a, a reputation as, you know, maybe a weekly winner, Western weekly winner, or, uh, you know, just however, however, is to dominate your solo queue games with whatever weapon you play. It's going to give you the confidence and technical mechanical ability to translate to a your first few scrims. Um, where you, you could really show off your ability because that's the first ability everyone needs to have. You're not going to be able to play your first scrim, your first tournament, um, and know what to do. You know, you're going to have to rely on your mechanics. The experience and knowledge comes after that. Um, for teams that are trying to break through from maybe a plus two level, plus three level, uh, trying to get to the next level, trying to you know beat a plus one team, uh, stuff like that, get into plus one as an individual. It's more of the same. When you're fighting teams um, better than you, when you have the opportunity scrimming or playing in tournament, um, not everyone cares. There are some players like myself who are always looking out for like the next good player, the next player that's super impressive. And a lot of it comes down to mechanics. So you could be an extremely mechanically gifted player on any weapon. It doesn't have to be E-Leader or Tenetech. It could be Junior, it could be Zap, it could be physically, literally any weapon. And as long as you like are giving like a good effort in those tournament games and, and showing off some ability, like you could definitely get noticed. Like I'll, I'll never forget just in a random solo queue game, um, in 2017, I think, I, there was an H3 in my lobby. I tweeted about him and he would literally go on to be on the best Western team that ever was assembled in Splatoon 2, uh, FT went bursty. Like, things like that are, don't go unnoticed by players that have the eye looking out for it. Hone in on your mechanics, whatever that is. The, the experience that you want, the game sense, all that kind of stuff, it will come as you get the just the pure experience in the game, but you're not gonna get that opportunity without dominating your solo queue games, having someone notice, dominating your plus three scrims, your plus two scrims, your mid-level scrims, whatever they are, uh, and then slowly moving up that way. There's no cheat to it. You can't skip through levels. You're not gonna be able to handle it once you're there. Um, just it's just hard work that's all that's bottom line that's really all it comes down to yeah i mean i think solo is something that people really wish they didn't have to do to get better at every level of play and it, yeah it can be very important i always forget bursty was a, a solo warrior and that's also how i found arashi originally he was like a top 20 dually sculpture player in x rank that, that's crazy yeah it's still it's totally wild but it, it's worth it like yeah it, I, I mean i see it all the time <laughs> where else are you getting your start we all know that solo queue and splatoon is is a struggle to say the least but um if at minimum you can't dominate and carry your solo queue games you might not be at the level that you think you are like th that's the first thing you should be trying to do Wh whatever rank you're in whatever level you're at try to be able to take over that game and win when you're 1v7 when like you're just sitting there being like my team's doing nothing blah blah blah, blah, blah. like if you could win that but, like you could really achieve like anything at any level in, in our community for sure like a hundred percent you could be able to do it yeah it's a lot of hard work but i think it'll definitely pay off thank you so much for joining me for uh this discussion 
but it was a blast. You can find Fuzzy, his links will be in the description if you want to hear more from him. He does some streams, and I'll get him to do content one day, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Char. Really appreciate All it. Right. Thank you so much.